Welcome to EasyMaths. In this video, we will be looking at inequalities. What inequalities mean, the symbols we use, representing inequalities on number line, and writing the integer values for inequalities. So let's get straight into it. What is an inequality? Well, an inequality tells us when a given expression or a value is larger or smaller than another value. Now, these are the symbols that we use for our inequalities. Now, let's see what they mean. It's basically these four symbols are coming from this one symbol. And let's look at that. So imagine your elbow, when you close your arm, we have this shape. Now here, the open section means that the value on this side, the open section, is bigger. And the little part of your elbow, the small part, this little piece here, means that the value on this side is smaller. Let's say, for example, we had x is, and we have this sign, 2. Well, this is saying that my expression on the left, x, is bigger than the expression on the right, which is 2. So it reads x is bigger or larger than 2. And if you want to read it from the right to the left, then it would mean that 2 is less than x. Let's look at another one. Let's say we had y and we had it written like this. Now this reads y. Remember, this is the small section, so it means y is smaller than 3. Or let's read it from the right. 3 is bigger than y. Now what if we had r and we had this sign? What does it mean? Uh, let's say 4. Well, this means r is bigger or it can be equal to the 4. So it means 4 is included. And if we had p less than or equal to 3. Let's read it again. So p is less than or equal to 3. So let's think of some values. Well, in the first one, x is bigger than 2, which means x can be 3, x can be 5, x can be 100. In this one, x, y is smaller than 3. So anything smaller than 3, y could be 2, y could be 0, y could be negative number. In this one, r is bigger or equal to 4, which means r can be 4, r can be 5, R can be anything, 4 or more. And P is less than or equal to 3, which means P can be 3, because it says equal to it. P can be 2, P can be 0, P can be anything from 3 and below. Okay, unlike an equation, which only take on one value, so X is equal to 2, in this case, x can only be 2. And as you notice for our inequations or our inequalities, the variables can take on any value that satisfy our inequality. So let's look at some other examples and how we represent them on number lines. So how do we read this? Well, x is bigger than negative 3. Or if we read it from the right, it means negative 3 is smaller than x. Let's first represent this on a number line. So if we have our number line, and my focus digit in the inequality is where I'm going to put um, a circle or a dot. So let's start with negative 3 here, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And let's just put negative 4 here. So this says x is bigger than negative 3. So I need to focus on negative 3. And because it's bigger, my arrow needs to be pointing above my 3. So this is showing me on the number line that x can take on any value 
in this direction aside from negative 3. That's the reason we have an open circle because it cannot be negative 3, anything bigger than negative 3. So let's write some values, integer values for x. x could be minus 2, x could be minus 1, x could be 0, x could be 5, x could be anything in this direction. y is less than negative 1. Let's do our number line. So we know we must have negative 1 in, on our number line because that's our focus digit. That's the digit in, in, in our inequality. Let's have negative 2. Let's have negative 3. Let's have 0 and 1. So my circle is going to be above my focus digit, which is negative 1. And because it says y is less than negative 1, then my arrow needs to be going below the negative one. Now the arrow is going to tell us what are the possible values that our y can take on. So can y be negative one? No, because it says it must be less than negative one. So anything less than negative one. So it could be negative two, it could be negative three, it could be negative four, etc. All the way down. It cannot be anything in the positive direction. Okay, how about this one? P is less than or equal to 3. So let's do our number line. And we know our focus digit is the one in, in the inequality, which is 3. So I must have 3. Let's put 2, 1, 0. Let's put 4 and 5. So my circle is going to be a above the digit in the inequality. Now, where does the arrow go? Well, it says P is less than or equal to 3. So my arrow is going to be going below my 3. So what are the values that P could take on? Notice it also says that it can be equal to 3. So the fact that it can be equal to 3, we need to have a closed circle. We need to shade our circle to tell us that 3 is included. So our values could be anything from 3 or less. So it could be 3, it could be 2, it could be 1, it could be 0, it could be negative 1, etc. This one, r is greater than or equal to 5. So let's do our number line. I know what digit I must have in my number line. I must have 5. Now it says greater than, so I'm going to put more values on this side. 8, 9. And then let's just put 4 and 3. So my circle is going to be above the digit that's in my inequality, which is 5. Now, how do I know whether or not to close it or to shade it? Well, because it says that it can be equal to it, meaning 5 is going to be included in my values. So I shade it. Now, because it's greater than, then I know my arrow must be going above my 5. So what are the possible integer values? Well, it can take on any value from 5 and above. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 100, etc. And the last one, what do you think this means? So we're given a number line, an inequality. What do you think? Well, if you remember, we use our, we put circles above our focus digits. So what do we have? Well, a circle is above my zero. So let's just write that. A circle is above my 0. A circle is also above my 4. So I know I must have those two values in my inequality. Now, the fact that I have two circles, it means I have two inequalities joined together. That's the reason we have one line. So what does this mean? Well, it means that x can be 4. So it can be equal to 4. Or anything less than 4 because it's going in this direction. So it can be equal to 4, 
So let's forget about the 0 for now and focus on the 4. x can be equal to 4 and it can be less than 4. Now let's look on this side. x can be 0. No, it cannot because the circle is not shaded. But can it be less than zero? No, because we're going above the zero. So that means x must be greater than zero. And back. The first one says, write down the inequality shown on the number line. Well, we know it's one inequality because we have one circle. And our circle is above the negative one. So we know we're going to have negative 1. And what is it saying? That x is greater than negative 1. So x is bigger than negative 1. Now, number 2 says n is an integer. Write down four possible values of n. So you could think it says n is bigger than negative 3. Let's do our number line so we have a better perspective. So I know I need negative 3. I can write negative 4 here. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let's just use those. Now my circle is going to be above my negative 3. It's not going to be shaded because it didn't have the equal to sign below it. N is bigger than negative 3, which means it must be going up of the negative 3 or to the right of your number line. So n is bigger than negative 3. Let's look at the values it could take on. So it could be any of these values except negative 3. So it could be negative 2, it could be negative 1, it could be 0, etc. They only want 4, so we could just write from the number line negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. There we have our 4 integer values. Okay, this one, n is smaller than or equal to 2. Let's do a number line. So I know I must have 2. So let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. And my circle is going to be above my 2 because that's the focus digit in my inequality. And it says it's less than it. So the arrow will be going below the 2 or to the left of your number line. But it also says it can be equal to the 2, which means 2 is included. So we have to shade it. Now let's write down the four possible values it could take on. So it can take on anything from 2 or less. So it could be 2, it could be 1, it could be 0, it could be negative 1, etc. But we only want four values. And then the last one, if you notice, this is a combination. So let's draw, um, write our number line first. We read from the middle. So n is greater than negative 3 but n must be less than or equal to 2. Let's put that on the number line. Since we have two values in our inequality we know we're going to have two circles. So we're going to have a circle at negative 3 and we're going to have a circle at 2. Let's extend this and we're going to have a circle at 2. Yes? So one circle is going to be here. It's going to be shaded because it says n can also be equal to it. So 2 is going to be included. And a circle above negative 3, it will not be shaded because it did not say it can be equal to it. Now n is greater than negative 3, which means our arrow must be going above the negative 3. But n is less than or equal to 2, so our arrow must go below our 2. And then, of course, these two will meet, so this is what our inequality would look like. Now, what are the values that fall within this range? Let's write them on the number line. So negative 3, then we have negative 2, negative 1, we have 0, and we have 1. So all the possible values would be negative 2, because it cannot include negative 3, it's not equal to it, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. 
and those are all the possible values that n could take on. Well done.